For the world assumed that only the traditional giants, countries with vast industrial histories and global dominance, could lead the future of cyber warfare and missile defense. But something unexpected happened. A much smaller nation, surrounded by threats and operating under relentless pressure, quietly built one of the most advanced defense ecosystems on the planet. While larger nations moved slowly, Israel moved with the urgency of survival. And over time, it didn't just catch up to Britain's capabilities. It overtook them in some of the most critical sectors of modern security, cyber intelligence, missile interception, and integrated defense technology. Today, we're breaking down exactly how that happened, what makes Israel's systems so unique, and why this shift matters for the future of global defense and technology. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a fascinating and extremely important subject, how Israel managed to surpass Britain in cyber and missile defense technology. We'll explore the exterior design of its defense architecture, take a quick look at the interior landscape of the institutions and innovation culture powering it, understand performance metrics, evaluate safety features, pinpoint the unique selling points, talk about cost considerations, and end with a solid conclusion about what this means for the world going forward. So let's get right into it because this is far more than a story about weapons. It's a story about innovation, strategy, and the future of national security. To understand how Israel gained an edge, you first have to look at the exterior layer of its defense ecosystem, what the world sees from the outside. Unlike Britain, which maintains large-scale conventional military structures shaped by decades of global operations, Israel built a defense network designed from the start to handle rapid, asymmetrical threats. You can see this in the layout of its missile defense architecture. Systems like Iron Dome, David's Sling, and Arrow weren't developed as enormous, slow-moving defense installations. They're compact, modular, and built for fast deployment. The entire exterior design philosophy revolves around flexibility, batteries and interceptors that can be moved, radar systems that can relocate, and command centers that can coordinate multiple layers of defense instantly. Where Britain's missile defense systems historically lean toward broader strategic coverage, Israel engineered hyper, responsive systems that can track, calculate, and intercept threats within seconds. This external structure gives Israel a visual and operational advantage that looks deceptively simple, but is incredibly sophisticated under the surface. Stepping briefly into the interior of the system, meaning the organizational core rather than physical spaces, you find extremely tight integration between military units, intelligence agencies, and private sector tech innovators. Instead of siloed institutions that often slow down development in larger countries, Israel created an ecosystem where cybersecurity firms, military engineers, and intelligence officers collaborate almost daily. This short internal pipeline allows new technologies, patches, algorithms, or interception upgrades to go from concept to field testing far faster than in most nations. Even the talent pipeline is unique. Young recruits enter elite technology, focused units like 8200 straight from high school, gaining years of cybersecurity experience before many other countries would even begin training someone at that level. The interior, while small in size, is dense with expertise and high, speed decision-making, giving Israel an agility advantage Britain struggles to match. When we talk about performance, this is where Israel systems become globally recognized. Take missile defense. The interception success rate of systems like Iron Dome has been widely cited for achieving extremely high rates under real, repeated combat conditions. But performance isn't only about the percentage of hits, it's also about processing speed. Israel's radar and command algorithms calculate trajectory and threat levels almost instantly, 
allowing the system to decide whether a projectile should be intercepted or ignored. This selective interception increases efficiency and reduces operating costs. Britain, with its more traditional air defense systems, was not designed for constant rapid fire battlefield conditions. The UK's programs are effective for large scale threats, but weren't built for the ceaseless barrage style patterns Israel has faced for years. On the cyber side, Israel leads in detection speed and innovation cycles. Cyber defenses are updated in near real time because of the tight collaboration between private cyber firms and military cyber units. The speed of identifying, isolating, and neutralizing threats becomes a performance benchmark other nations study closely. Safety features are another critical distinction. Israel's systems are engineered with redundancy at every level. Missile defense batteries operate with overlapping coverage, ensuring that if one unit is jammed, another can instantly take over. Radar units run multiple independent scanning modes to avoid detection or disruption. In cyber defense, the safety architecture is layered with predictive algorithms, zero trust frameworks, and continuous authentication systems designed to minimize breach risks even if one layer is compromised. These safety components weren't built for theoretical threats. They were built in response to daily attempts to penetrate Israel's digital and physical defenses. Meanwhile, British systems, while highly secure and sophisticated, haven't faced the same level of constant operational testing. Their safety protocols are robust, but evolve more slowly, often following bureaucratic cycles rather than real time battlefield necessity. This difference in operational urgency affects not just how safe systems are, but how quickly new vulnerabilities are patched. Now, when we look at the unique selling points of Israel's defense technology, several elements stand out. First is real-world high-frequency testing. Few nations refine their systems under the intense, repetitive pressure Israel faces. This creates an environment where defense technologies improve rapidly because every engagement provides data. Second is compact efficiency. Israel's missile systems are smaller, more deployable, and more adaptable than traditional large-scale installations. Third is the deep integration between cyber and missile defense. Indicators from cyber intelligence can influence missile defense readiness and vice versa, creating a hybrid defense ecosystem. Fourth is speed, both in response time and innovation cycles. While Britain's defense technologies are world-class, they advance at a pace set by policy, procurement, and committee reviews. Israel's defense technologies advance at the pace of necessity. When threats evolve overnight, Israel adapts overnight. This agility is one of its biggest competitive advantages. Another unique point is talent development. Instead of waiting for university graduates to enter the workforce, Israel trains teens to operate at elite technical levels. Unit 8200 is famous for producing cybersecurity experts who go on to found some of the world's top tech companies. When these individuals complete their mandatory service, they bring years of hands on experience into the private sector. This creates a cycle where startups innovate, government institutions adopt those innovations, and the military deploys them rapidly. Britain has world-class universities and research institutions, but its talent pipeline moves at a more traditional pace. Israel's pipeline is more like a high-pressure accelerator. Let's talk about pricing because this is where the story takes an interesting turn. Israeli defense systems, despite their sophistication, often come at a lower operational cost compared to larger Western equivalents. Iron Dome interceptors, while not cheap, are far less expensive to operate repeatedly than systems designed in nations where defense budgets weren't shaped by constant conflict. Israel optimized for cost efficiency because it had to. Large nations like Britain, with bigger military budgets and global obligations, often build systems for flexibility across many types of missions. Israel builds systems to neutralize very specific 
high frequency threats, and this specialization helps reduce cost per intercept and cost per upgrade. On the cyber side, Israel's cybersecurity innovations are driven heavily by the private sector, meaning the government can adopt cutting edge solutions without always bearing full development costs. Meanwhile, Britain's procurement processes are generally more expensive and slower, which affects the overall cost efficiency of its defense programs. Israel's approach is leaner, faster, and often more affordable for the capabilities it delivers. The conclusion here isn't that Britain's defense technologies are outdated or ineffective. Britain remains one of the world's leading defense powers with exceptional intelligence agencies, advanced naval and air capabilities, and a long history of global operations. What's remarkable, however, is how Israel, a country with a fraction of Britain's size, budget, and resources managed to surpass it in two of the most critical technological fronts of modern defense cyber and missile interception. The reasons come down to agility, necessity, integration, and innovation culture. Israel's systems are built under constant pressure, tested in real world conditions, and improved based on immediate operational feedback. The country's tight collaboration between military, intelligence, and private tech sectors creates a rapid innovation cycle unmatched by many larger nations. By contrast, Britain's systems are excellent but evolve within a slower, more structured environment shaped by politics, policy, and global obligations. Ultimately, the story of how Israel surpassed Britain in these sectors isn't just about technology, it's about mindset. Israel treated cyber and missile defense as existential priorities and built systems that reflect that urgency. Britain, with broader global responsibilities and different threat landscapes, approached defense from a more traditional, strategic angle. But as the world shifts toward digital warfare, drone swarms, and rapid missile threats, Israel's fast, adaptive model may become the blueprint many nations look to. The future of defense will belong to countries that can innovate quickly, integrate deeply, and adapt relentlessly. And right now, Israel is showing the world exactly what that future looks like.